Good morning, everyone, and thank you once again for choosing to worship with us, wherever you may be today. This week, we continue with our series of Going Forward Together, Living in God's Covenant, and we've just shared the scripture readings in Genesis and Exodus, where God makes his promises with Abraham and Moses. I wonder what you immediately think of when you hear the word covenant. To some, it seems a rather old term, and one more relating to biblical times than in our society today. Today. God made promises in the Old Testament that still stand today. In a covenant with Abraham, God made both a personal promise to him and a universal promise to bless all humankind through his descendants. Abraham's obedience and trust in God is his part of the agreement. God promised never to leave his people. He promised to guide and direct the Israelites out of Egypt, and he never failed. God's covenants with Abraham and Moses reflect both his promise to humankind and his commitment to us. He never breaks his promises today to us either, although can we say the same the other way around? How often have we made promises even just to each other or ourselves, but never actually kept them either? There is a big difference between the idea of a contract and a covenant. A contract may be broken and dissolved, and sadly there are times, many times, that we break our covenant with God, yet God's covenant commitment is everlasting and he will not forsake us. Orny Newman wrote, When God makes a covenant with us, he says, I will love you with an everlasting love. I will be faithful to, to you even when you run away from me, reject me or betray me. In our society, we don't speak much about covenants, we speak about contracts. When we make a contract with a person or a business, we are saying, I will, I will fulfil my part as long as you fulfil yours. If you don't live up to your promises... I no longer have to live up to mine. Contracts are often broken because the partners or companies are, un are unwilling or unable to be faithful to their terms. But God didn't make a contract with us. God made a covenant with us. And God wants our relationship with him and with one another to reflect that covenant. That's why marriage, friendship, all types of relationships, life and community and are in all ways to give visibility to God's faithfulness in our lives together. There are many examples of God's covenant in the Old Testament, yet the definitive covenant is with Israel, through Moses in a section of Exodus that we shared, and then later on in the giving of the Ten Commandments and the setting up of the Ark of the Covenant. This covenant is well summed up by Jeremiah in chapter 7 when he says, I will be your God and you shall be my people. It's at this mountain that God is going to formally enter into a covenantal relationship with his people, a covenant is defined as a promise where God is involved. God already made an unconditional covenant with their forefather Abraham that he will use his descendants to bless all peoples on earth. Now God is saying, I'm going to extend this relationship to the Israelites, but through a covenant, conditional covenant with terms. We can take and learn a lot from the covenant with the Israelites through Moses in Exodus 19. Firstly, God asks Moses to remind the people who have been rescued from Egypt. You yourselves have seen what I did to Egypt and how I carried you in eagle's winds and brought you to myself. This image of God, this image of being carried to God in eagle's wings is both compelling and reassuring, as Isaiah reminds us in chapter 40. Those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. I'm sure you don't need me to tell you that an eagle is a bird of prey that kills small animals to feed its young. I'm not very fond of the Lord of the Rings films, but there's a scene at the end of one when the good armies are making one final sta stand against the evil armies. They're overwhelmed by the hordes coming towards them, and just as they come swooping in, the hobbit Pippin looks up to the sky, smiles and shouts, The eagles are coming! The eagles are coming! The eagles then swoop down and attack the enemy and chase them away. That's kind of like God. He swoops in to rescue his people, the Israelites, not just from Egypt, but from the false gods of Egypt and the broken lives they've left behind there. It didn't stop there, though. Still today, God, God wants to rescue us and carry us in eagle's wings to renew our strength. Secondly, while God's covenant is everlasting and faithful, it also requests that we keep his commandments and are obedient to his will in our lives. God says to Moses, Now if you obey me fully and keep my covenant, then out of all nations you will be my treasured possession. I wonder when we actually last see, so considered what that means. When did we actually last see, 
Yes to your will, Lord, and no to my own. I watched the commissioning service of our new Salvation Army officers last week, as I'm sure many of you did too. Each one of these individuals has stepped out and said yes to God's will for their lives in a very uncertain world. We pray God's continued guidance and strength upon their lives as they take up their new appointments over this period of time. Thirdly, this holy covenant called God's people to be set apart for him, for him and to belong to him. The covenanted people of God are called to be a witness to their Lord in word and in deed. The people witness to who God is and what God expects. It's up to us now to be that holy nation and in so doing, display the nature and character of God to others. God's full salvation involves us becoming holy in covenant relationship with himself and through the working of the Holy Spirit within us and through us. Holiness involves us reflecting something of God in his everlasting covenant, covenantal love and faithfulness. In the scripture reading, God wants to transform the broken Israelites into his treasured possession. Isn't that a lovely thought? God can take all our broken pieces too and make us into his precious treasures if we were only we would let him. It may be today that you're feeling lost or broken, just like the Israelites of Sinai were, and wondered how to move forward from whatever situation you're in just now. I'm sure there's been many times throughout this pandemic that we've longed to be able to see family and friends, but we're unable to do, to, to do so due to the lockdown restrictions. Just like that, God wants, God wants to meet us, wherever we are, and to share with him how we are feeling. Perhaps you feel you don't know where you are with God right now. Maybe it's time to define your relationship with him just as we do with friends and partners. Maybe it's time to trust him unconditionally with your life. God didn't save the Israelites from Egypt just so they could act like slaves in the desert. God did this to change their lives and he wants to change yours and mine too. God changes us so we can share that same message of his love and forgiveness with others. As the words in the well-known song by John Gowan say, in a world of transformation, God can change the hearts of men. As Christians, we have the immense but challenging privilege to pray for our neighbours, colleagues, family and friends, so that they too may know God's love and enter into a covenantal relationship with him, just as the Israelites did. In verse 9 of Exodus 19, the Lord says to Moses, I am going to come to you in a dense cloud, so that people will hear me speaking with you and will always put their trust in you. What do you think is the most important parts of a good relationship, whether on a personal or professional level? Many feel, people feel that communication is high up in that list. God doesn't say, you need to see me to believe, as Thomas had said of Jesus, sorry, as Thomas said of Jesus following his resurrection, but instead God says, you need to hear me to believe. How many times have we said to someone, usually very close to home, I dare say, that you're not listening, or you never listen to me, or some other maybe not so polite variety of words to that effect. To grow as Christians, we need to hear God's word regularly by reading the Bible, by spending time with him in prayer, and worshipping together, which over the past 16 months may not have always been easy, and not in the manner that we are used to. But we are so grateful for the online and printed opportunities which have enabled us to come together as a core in different ways. We then need to put what we have learned into action in our own lives, so we can learn to trust God more. Israel is called into a wonderful relationship with God. He wants to transform and use them to reach the whole world. He wants to communicate with them and love them. You and I don't need to approach God like the Israelites at Sinai did, because we have the amazing freedom to approach God through Jesus Christ. Through Jesus and his blood shed on the cross, we can come into God's presence unafraid. We can approach God in his holiness because Jesus approached us just where we are. We don't have to be perfect to access God's presence. Jesus lifts us up from wherever we are into that presence. When you feel overwhelmed by your sin and burdens, remember that God carried the Israelites out of Egypt on eagle's wings before he even asked them to obey him. God has carried us far away from our sins through the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. He's cleansed us on the inside, but is still teaching us how to live a holy life. One day Jesus is coming back. On that day, just like at Sinai, a trumpet will blast to announce his return. There'll be thunder and lightning and the whole world will shake. On that day, we will look up into the sky, smile and shout, the eagle is coming, the eagle is coming. 
We can approach God in his holiness because Jesus approached us just where we were. Those of us who are officers, soldiers, junior soldiers or adherents in the Salvation Army have all made solemn covenants with God. When I became a senior soldier, just a few years ago now, I chose the song, Oh Jesus, I have promised to be used during that meeting and we shared a small extract of this song last week as well. All four verses of this song are about our covenant relationship with God and the last one reminds us too of what he promised us as it starts by saying, O Jesus, thou hast promised to all who follow thee. This song was used during the commissioning service of our new lieutenants in the army last Saturday. These new lieutenants have all recently made their officer's covenant with God and that word was used many, many times during the meetings that day. I'd love to be able to say that I have stuck to all the promises and never broke my covenant made in the day that I became a senior soldier, but that just would not be true. Thankfully, God forgives and lifts us up again. As we, as individuals and as a corps, think about going forward together in a world that has changed dramatically recently, let us not forget the promises that God's made with us. We may not always agree in the best ways on what the best ways are moving forward and what our church will be like, but let's entrust it all to God's infinite care and wisdom. He knows what's best. He's got it all planned. We just need to take the time and follow his lead. His covenant with us will never ever be for, will be never ever be broken, no matter what we do. Let's pray together. Dear Lord Jesus, we come before you now thankful for the everlasting covenants that you made with Abraham and the Israelites all those years ago. We thank you that those covenants still have meaning today and forgive us, Lord, for the times when we fail to keep our side of the promises we have made. Thank you, God, for choosing us to follow you, even although we feel unworthy and not always up to the task. We pray for our core today and for all that it means to us. We particularly think of Mrs. Isabel Brodie and are grateful for the influence she had on so many of our lives. Lord, please bless all her family and friends at this sad time. And may they have peace knowing that indeed their mum, gran, aunt, friend has indeed been promoted to glory. We think of those who are unwell just now at our core. Some have undergone surgery in the past few weeks and many have different concerns just now. We may not know what is going on in each other's lives, but you do, Lord. And we bring them to you in prayer just now. Please surround them with your love and help us to be the people you have chosen and called us to be. May we always bear witness to your covenant in our lives. Please be with our code as we look forward and plan what the future of our church will be in a hopefully post-pandemic world. Guide those who make decisions as we believe you have it all planned already. Lord, we lay our lives before you as we remember your covenant with us and in so doing, renew our promises with you as we pray. And Jesus, we have promised to serve thee to the end. Oh, give us grace to follow our master and our friend. In Jesus' name we make our prayer. Amen. Amen.